in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. It's nice to see so many of you here for our Sacred Heart our, um, our First Friday uh, devotion, uh, which is a part of the Sacred Heart devotion, uh, making our communions today in reparation to uh, the offenses against the, uh, the Sacred Heart of our Lord. Uh, so please be sure to form your intention for, uh, before your communion today for that reason. This is the, the nine First Fridays devotion. Uh, we also have today, our saint for the day is Saint Cajetan. Uh, he was born to a noble family in Italy in the year 1480, and he became a great um, uh, founder. He founded the religious order, was, um, became famous for founding hospitals. And in, in extreme poverty, actually, as we'll see, uh, one of the vows, uh, one of the, the, um, he, the order he would found, uh, they would not ask for alms or look for revenue. They would just have to rely on whatever people happen to give them. So a great faith. Uh, but he was, um, so he was born in 1480, and his father died when he was two years old, uh, but he was raised very piously by his mother. It was said he was, um, when he was a boy, he was very good. They called him the little saint, and he would just continue that for the whole rest of his life. So I guess there is hope, moms, your cute, sweet little boy might possibly stay that way. It is possible. It does happen to some moms, um, just not very often. Uh, but uh, Kajetan uh, became, uh, so he grew up, he was educated, and he actually became a lawyer, uh, which he earned his doctorate degree in uh, the city of Padua. Uh, he was 24 years of old uh, then and became employed by Pope Julius II as a diplomat. So recall, he was from one of, the, one of the illustrious families, a very noble family in Italy. So, of course, they would have known each other and um, the Pope himself being um, most often from the nobility was going to know the other noble families so that we see that very often a nobleman is born to a family is educated is raised goes and works for the pope and then decides uh, he wants to give live a religious life and so that is exactly what happened with saint cajetan he was very good at law he was very good at diplomacy he ended up actually going to venice uh, it was the Republic of Venice at the time. Italy was not, we shouldn't think of it as one united country always. It was very um, disparate. A lot of different kingdoms and fiefdoms and so on. St. Cajetan was sent. He reconciled the Republic of Italy with, with Rome, the Papal States. So very successful. But it didn't really suit him. He didn't, he didn't want to do that. He wanted to give his, li his life to God. And so he left the service of Pope Julius. And three years later, in the year 1516, he was ordained to the priesthood at the age of 36. So soon after this, he was recalled to his hometown of Vicenza by the death of his mother, and he ended up staying there. He began working with the poor and the sick, and so that by the year 1522, about six years after he'd, he'd returned, he founded a hospital for what's called the incurables, people who were sick, uh, they needed help, they needed medical attention, but it was an incurable condition. They, they couldn't be cured, they needed continual medical care. Uh, very often they were left on their own. St. Cajetan, having compassion, founds this hospital for these, these uh, patients. Uh, he was again from a noble family. Both of his parents were now deceased, so he inherited a great sum of money. And I think in one account, he actually uh, purchased a hospital uh, with his own money, just bought it on his own. Um, so he was caring for the poor, caring for the sick, and he was very well connected, right? He was, he was a noble, noble of the nobility, so he was able to get, um, uh, you know, the help from other noblemen, we could say. Uh, so just one year later, he founded his first hospital in 1522. The next year, he founds another hospital in Venice, and um, he starts to gather uh, other men to himself to found an order, working in hospitals uh, and especially dedicated to prayer. And we should, we should always think about that. The saints are always more concerned with the soul than with the body. And all, any humanitarian effort, founding orphanages, schools, hospitals, whatever it may be, it's because uh, others are loved for the sake of Christ. And what does Christ want most of all? He says, the poor you will always have with me, but you will not always have me. And we could understand that spiritually as well. People are always going to be poor. You, 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 you can't always help them. Um, you know, you can't end poverty. You can't have a war on poverty. Uh, but people can always have Christ, right? Unless they lose him by sin. 
And that's what these people saw. It's like these people are poor, we're going to help them as much as we can. But more important than physical poverty or, or physical um, disease, spiritual poverty, spiritual disease, spiritual sickness, the loss of Christ is the worst of all. So that is what they wanted to bring to people. They wanted to care for others for love of Christ and bring others to the love of Christ. So that was always their intention. And for that reason, uh, St. Cajetan uh, formed his order. He called them the Theatines. And he combined the spirit of monasticism with active ministry in hospitals. Is people caring for the poor, caring for the sick, but praying first. Attending first to their own spiritual life before they started helping others socially, physically, uh, economically, whatever it is. And teaching others to do the same. Yes, we're here to help you. Yes, we're here to cure you. But you need to cure yourself. Are you living a bad life? Are, are, are you um, steeped in sin? Then reform, change. Are you saying prayers? Then begin. Right? That is always what they would do. That is always the efforts of the church. Any humanitarian effort of the church is predicated upon the love of Christ for souls. And that's how you know if, if any organization of the church is, does not have the right attitude, is it what is their spiritual, what are they doing spiritually for the people they're helping? That should always be the bottom line question. So uh, he founds this order, and as I mentioned, uh, he, 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 by this time, he, he's a nobleman. He had a lot of money. It was gone. It was all gone. He had spent it all, and that's why he made his order take that, um, I won't say it's a vow, but he said, you know, we're, we're not going to rely on revenue. We're not going to build up, you know, money. Sure, certainly he'd seen stacks of money ruin other no noblemen. So he said, we're not going to rely on revenue. We're going we're gonna to rely on alms, but we're not going to ask for alms. We're just going to rely on people's free will donations. That is crazy. And that's why we had the gospel reading that we had today. Right? Look at the lilies of the field. The, they neither spin nor sow, but they're clothed in the birds of the air and so on. Your heavenly Father will take care of you. Um, that, that, that's a grace from God right there. That's not, if somebody came to me and said, Father, I want us to found this order, I would tell them you're crazy. Like you have to be prudent. That's, that's nuts. But every now and then, God does crazy things. And so we, we see that with, with St. Cajetan. Um, now, one of the things we should think of, so this is 15, the 1520s. And when we think of the 1520s, we should think of Europe falling apart. Because this is, this is right after 1519, Martin Luther is nailed his 95 theses on the Wittenberg door. The Pro Protestant Revolution is about to go. But the problem was not Martin Luther, the problem was not Calvin, the problem was not Zwingli, the problem was not these Protestants who were just frustrated Catholics. That was it. The, the Catholic Church had been in shambles since the Avignon Papacy, which is the 1400s, where the popes had been in France and ruled, it was Caesar papism with the French kings. They finally went back to Rome at the, at the insistence of St. Catherine of Siena. Uh, but the papacy had never really recovered. For 200 years, there was this, the papacy was in shambles and not doing its job. The clerics were not doing their jobs. They were living in concubinage. There was simony. There was, there was just corruption. That was the problem. It was a corrupt clergy, and they weren't being disciplined. Does that sound familiar to today? That has always happened in the church. It happened before, and it was happening in the 1500s. And, and uh, you know, for the next 100 years, 15 to 1600, the dissolution would, would, would continue, Europe would continue to fall apart religiously, and that would lead to the religious wars in the 1600s, uh, where, where I think Europe saw millions dead, uh, both of war, of starvation, of the plague, and it was because they lost their spiritual foundation. They lost their centrality in Christ. That, is, that was the source of the problem. People say that religion has caused more wars. Baloney. Religion has always saved the world from war, specifically the Catholic religion that, that saved the world from conflict. Uh, so, you know, I mention that because in 1527 uh, was a, an event known as the Sack of Rome, which really ended the Renaissance in Rome, uh, and it just decimated the population. St. Cajetan was there at the time. He was in Rome. He was trying to do his, his good work. Uh, the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope were at odds. Uh, the Holy Roman Emperor was employing 20,000 mercenaries whom he wasn't able to pay, and they ran amok and sacked Rome. And they were looking for money, they were looking for pay. It was an absolute disaster. Uh, Rome went from 55,000 population to 10,000 in population. Um, uh, they, they got hit with the plague, it, it was awful. 
But what, what this meant for St. Cajetan is that he was imprisoned by these mercenaries and they knew he was of the nobility and they wanted his money. Where is it? We know you've got it. It was all in heaven, right? It was, it was the poor, it was the sick. He had laid up for himself treasures in heaven. And so St. Cajetan got, got imprisoned and tortured for, uh, 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 for uh, some time, a number of months, uh, before they realized he really didn't have anything. So they released him and he left and he went back to, um, I'm going to go to um, uh, Venice uh, after having gone through that um, harrowing experience. Uh, Rome was just decimated. So definitely a tumultuous time, more people than ever, you know, needing attention and help. And so St. Cajetan uh, just continues his efforts, continues with his order, doesn't set him back, even though Rome just got sacked, tens of thousands of people, you know, were displaced, uh, 10,000 were killed, he was imprisoned, he was tortured, he just went back to his work helping people in hospitals. So he returns, he goes back to Venice, and this time he meets somebody else there by the name of St. Jerome Emiliani whose feast day was July 20th, which is last month. Jerome Emiliani, if you recall, was a mercenary himself uh, when he was younger, and he was imprisoned in Venice. He was in a dungeon, and he got miraculously released by the Blessed Virgin. So now he and Cajetan had something in common, right? Uh, so they, together, the two of them, worked to found hospitals, orphanages. Um, St. Cajetan would help uh, Jerome Emiliani found his order, uh, the um, Congregation of Clerks Regular. So we see that. We see that friendship and that help among like-minded men doing so much good. Think about that. If you found an orphanage and you give 30, 50, 100, 200 young boys or girls a life, you give them a father figure, you give them a family, which they don't have. For 200 people, what a difference. The world's a totally different place. Or for somebody who was dying in their home and nobody cared about them, and they came and took them and put them in a hospital and gave them care and compassion and, 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 and somebody who loved them, right? That's being Christ to the world. And, and so the, that's how the world has changed. Who knows, all those orphans that, you know, St. Cajetan and St. Jerome Emiliani gave a, a home and a life, how did they change the world? How did their children change the world, right? We, we just don't know what one good person can do when they pray, right? When they're willing to suffer and just give everything for Christ. So that is the, um, uh, that was the, uh, we could say that the power of, of any saint, but especially of Saint Cajetan, was that precisely that life of prayer. Because he saw the priests aren't doing it. The religious aren't doing it. That, that's why we're in this mess is because other people are not doing what they're supposed to do. So what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go out like raging and, 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 and angry at other people? You know, when you want to do something done right, just start with yourself. So he would pray. He would spend hours of prayer each day. Sometimes he would spend eight hours in prayer at once. Eight hours, total prayer. Um, he was gifted, we could say, with, with um, uh, the prophecy. He was known to experience religious ecstasies. And one Christmas night when he was in Rome, he had a vision of the Blessed Virgin placing the infant uh, Christ in his very own arms. So uh, a very deep life of prayer for St. Cajetan, and that is what gave him those, that spiritual uh, fruit with all of his efforts. Uh, so he continued to do this. Um, he also, um, I would make a note, he established a, a credit union to help poor people. They could bring in a, a collateral and get a, an interest-free or a very low interest rate loan. And St. Gadgetin, his credit union ended up becoming the Bank of Naples, which is still in existence today. So I don't know many saints who founded the bank, but here we go, St. Cajetan. Um, and it, again, it was, it, was, it, was, it was based to help people, right, in whatever capacity they needed. So he continued doing this, this great work, and he finally died in Naples on 7 August in the year 1547. And during his last illness, when it was apparent that his death was, was near, he was encouraged to lie in a bed because he would always sleep on the floor. But he replied, our Savior died on the cross, let me die on wood at least. And then he, he, he finally passed away. He was um, uh, nearly 60, 67 years old. Uh, so that is it. What an example, right? What a saint. And, and again, just one of the many, many, many saints that, that is in the church that we have for our example. And as I mentioned, it is by prayer that we accomplish that. Uh, prayer is first and anything else is second. So let us resolve 
uh, always to say our daily prayers. If we're not good at it, if we think it's impossible, just keep at it. Do a little bit at a time. God will help us to be successful. Um, we just want to have a relationship with him. That is what prayer, that is what sanctity is. Uh, so St. Cajetan, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.